A Karen snatches my hearing aid out of my ear, throws my walking stick onto the rails, and accuses me of faking my disability. Despite her getting banned from the train station, here's what happened. So I'm disabled, deaf, chronically ill, immunosuppressed, have muscle and joint weakness, and I'm a fainting risk. I wear hearing aids, use a walking stick, and frequently have to sit down wherever I stand to ensure I don't hurt myself. So obviously I tend to have a hard time dealing with people generally, but this entitled mother I met today takes the cake for the worst encounter I have ever had. I was sitting in a train station, minding my own business with maybe 10 other people on the platform, including the Karen and her child. The train was delayed by almost half an hour, so obviously, people were irritable. It was raining, there was no entertainment, and the train station still requires masks to be worn, which is annoying for everyone but important nonetheless. So yeah, no one is having fun. As mentioned above, I'm deaf, so I wasn't really paying much attention to the people around me, and I only had one hearing aid in, so I could listen to music with an earphone in the other ear. It isn't until I see something faceplant into the ground in front of me that I even paid attention. A child laid face down at my feet, crying loud enough that my hearing aid was somewhat picking it up, and suddenly there is a woman screaming in my face. I explained to her that I'm deaf. I also have pins on my jacket and bag that said the same thing, and it takes several minutes of her shouting before she pulls down her mask. The conversation went as follows. You tripped up my kid. Uh, I did no such thing. She points at my walking stick, which is propped up against the wall, out of the way, and hasn't moved since I put it there. No one tripped over my walking stick. It's against the wall. No way your kid fell over it. Karen then screams, Are you calling me a liar? I just watched my kid run over there and trip over your stupid walking stick. She then goes on a mini rant about how entitled we teens, I'm 21, are, and how we have no respect for our elders, accusing them of lying and how dare I pretend to be disabled. I'm quite used to hearing this, so I just let her go on while her child decides to stop crying now that it's no longer getting attention and continues to chase pigeons around the platform. Some people look at us, but if anyone said anything to Karen, then I don't hear them. Why is your child running around on the platform? I ask when she finishes. Because he's bored. We've been waiting for half an hour and he has nothing to do. He shouldn't be running around on the platform. It's dangerous. Don't tell me how to parent my child. I assumed that would be the end of the conversation, seeing as she had already yelled at me and her child was no longer upset. So I go to put my earphone in, and of course, that was the wrong thing to do. Karen, give my son your earphones if you're so concerned about him running around. I wanted to tell her that I don't really care about her child, but she would certainly be upset if he face-planted the ground again and fell in front of a train. But obviously I didn't, and just told her that, no, I would not be giving her my earphones. I went to put the earphone back in, this time making sure to say a firm bye to her when she decided to snatch my earphone from my ear. My earphones have a wire. My hearing aid does not. She grabbed my hearing aid from my ear, which hurts when it's so rough and sudden, by the way. She grabbed her kid's hand and immediately began to leg it with my hearing aid. I followed her, shouting for her to stop and give it back, but now not being able to hear anything she might have said back. When the woman gets to the end of the platform, she turned and ran the other way. While I'm thinking about whether to not to just put my arm in front of her, grab her, or honestly just push her the jerk down until she gives me my hearing aid back, she gets past me and then goes to my walking stick, which I left by the wall and she grabs it and throws it on the rails. I could see her face and she was saying something to me but I couldn't hear what she was saying. I shouted her, swearing very loudly because she just threw the walking stick I paid pound 44 onto the rails and she is holding a hearing aid that would cost a few hundred pounds to replace if she broke it. A nice man came to my aid and speaks to Karen, but I have no idea what's said. Next thing I know, someone who worked at the train station came to help, and thankfully she spoke sign language so I could actually know what was happening. I explained what happened to the woman in sign language so Karen couldn't interrupt, and the woman immediately gave me help. She made Karen give back my hearing aid and provided me with antibacterial wipes and such to clean them. She had someone go retrieve my walking stick, which put an additional 10-minute delay on the train we were waiting for, and had security remove Karen, who was screaming and shouting the entire time, from the train station. The woman claimed that she didn't know it was a hearing aid, which is beside the point because she still would have taken my personal property if it was actually my earphone, and said that I was probably lying about being deaf and disabled, so how was she supposed to know? Because I have chosen to not file charges on Karen, luckily nothing was damaged, and I am fresh out of university, dealing with legal procedures seems like more hassle than it's worth right now. Karen has received a lifetime ban from that train station, so if that's where she lives, then she will have to drive to another town just to get the train. If not, then she'll never be able to get off on that stop, and will have to get off on the one before or after. So yeah, just a wild encounter with a Karen in public today. 
It has been a few hours, and my ear still hurts from where she yanked my hearing aid out, and I just genuinely can't believe the audacity of this woman. Also, yes, I know I should press charges on Karen. I have made the decision to not press charges based on my own bad experiences with police and the criminal justice system in the past as a deaf person. I am going through a very chaotic time in my life right now, and the additional stress of dealing with pressing charges, which is much harder than it needs to be as a disabled person, so I have made the decision not to press charges for my own mental health. So yeah, please keep that in mind before commenting that I should press charges on her. Oh my gosh, OP, what an absolutely wild and insane encounter with a Karen. I can't believe she had the audacity to not only accuse you of tripping her child, but also snatch your hearing aid out of your ear. Like, who does that? And then, just to top it all off, she throws your walking stick onto the rails. Unbelievable! Honestly, it's so frustrating that you had to go through all this, but I'm glad that the nice train station worker stepped in and helped you out. And can we talk about how Karen claimed she didn't know it was a hearing aid? She a crazy woman for real. An entitled Karen mom yanks my mom's prosthetic arm off after demanding a disabled parking spot. Yeah, so this story takes place somewhere in the late 90s, early 2000s. So some backstory, my mom was in an accident when she was 14 and lost her right arm. She has about one-fourth of that arm left that she calls her stub. And to be honest, the loss hasn't done much to derail her. She drives, she has a joystick-esque thing which sticks out of the wheel, and she turns it like she's steering a ship. She calls it her knob, loudly and in public. She worked for a long time until she started having issues with the arm she does have, and she's generally been the person in the family to host, prepare all events, and do all the labor. Honestly, she's my hero, but you're here for the story, so here goes. Mom and I go to the supermarket at the busy hours on a weekend because we couldn't make our usual after-school weekday trip when things were less crazy. We go around the whole parking lot twice, as do a row of cars behind us, and we finally managed to nab a disabled spot right by the entrance because someone was leaving as we approached. Now, my mother rarely uses the disabled parking, even though she's permitted, because she always says people who can't walk etc. need it more. But again, she is permitted, and there weren't any other spaces. After we park and get out, we hear a car honk a few times, followed by, Excuse me! As a woman runs up from behind, catching us just before the entrance to the store, this woman literally left her car running in the middle of a busy parking lot, causing a massive pileup. So, Karen catches our attention with her shouting, and when we turn around, we're greeted with her, Can I speak to the manager haircut? 90s edition and about half a dozen kids, ranging from goth tween to a toddler in her arms. Karen then goes on to explain how the spot my mom just parked in is for disabled people in an accusatory tone. My mom was wearing her prosthetic arm underneath her long-sleeved denim coat, overly big, so the fingertips of her prosthetic were barely visible. So it was an honest mistake, even though it was a little odd the way she'd abandoned her car and ran up to us with her entire litter. Still, my mom smiles and proclaims, Don't worry, I'm allowed to park there and we turn back around. That answer wasn't good enough for Karen. Suddenly, Karen and her kids are in front of us, and she's given the toddler to another of her children just so she can fold her arms and pout. As you can see, she gestures toward her kids. I have a lot going on, and I need that spot more than you do. You only have one child. Now, I must have only been six or seven, but even I knew the difference between disabled parking and those spaces reserved for parents with small children. I said something along the lines of, you need a disabled badge to park there. It doesn't matter how many kids you have, in six, seven-year-old lingo. And this woman took major offense. She goes off on a major rant about how being a mother of all her children was hard, how she was having an awful day slash week slash month, and how it's not fair that my mom, who looked perfectly fine, had tricked the government into getting a badge that lets her park in a spot that Karen should obviously have instead. As she rambles about this, she looks around, garnering the attention of other shoppers, and is doing that don't you agree with me thing that people do to validate themselves, but never gave anyone a chance to respond because she was already on to the next person. My mom grabs my hand and tries to lead me around Karen, ignoring her entirely, but Karen keeps stepping in front of my mom, demanding her spot. She's getting increasingly annoyed loud. I remember asking my mom several times if I'd done something wrong because my response seemed to have triggered this rant, but she kept reassuring me it was fine and that I should just ignore her, which annoyed Karen even more. This goes on for about five minutes, a very long five minutes, before my mom finally snaps. I have one arm, silencing Karen mid-sentence. I used to wonder why she didn't just tell Karen the specifics earlier, but as I've grown up, I've come to realize that it wasn't anyone else's business, and I can see why my mom wouldn't want to take her jacket off, which is kind of a chore for her, and pop the prosthetic just to prove something. So we begin to walk around Karen again, but barely make it five feet before we hear her go, 
bullshit. What happens next is seared into my brain. Karen storms up to my mother and tries to undress her, the denim jacket, and is just shaking slash calling my mother a liar, and my mother goes into full fight to the death mode because physical altercations are obviously more intense slash scary for her. She starts scratching, flailing, kicking, and even tries landing a headbutt on Karen, and as she does this, one of Karen's children attempts to jump in and help their mom, which leads to me jumping in to help mine, and suddenly I'm brawling with her kids. This couldn't have lasted longer than 30 seconds. It was enough time for people to stop and gather, but not enough for anyone to react slash put a stop to it. I can't imagine what it must have looked like, two women in their 30s fighting as their children do the same by them. But it all came to a stop when, somehow, Karen manages to yank my mom's denim jacket from her, and off pops her prosthetic with it, crashing to the ground and resulting in a universal gasp that shook the entire parking lot. Okay, exaggeration, but it was definitely a moment. All that's left on my mom's arm at this point is the suction pad and sharp nail-like hook that slots into the prosthetic. It looks like a blade sticking out of her stub, and without missing a beat my mom raises it to Karen and in a sarcastic tone goes, Come on then! I wish I was old enough at the time to realize how hilarious that was. A woman from the crowd that had gathered around us stormed into our little fight circle and picked my mom's arm up and handed it to her, before going off on Karen, who looked smaller than seven-year-old me at that point. People start shouting to get security, etc., and Karen rallies her spawn and they all run for her car. I still remember her kids yelling for her not to leave them because only her oldest could keep up with her running away as the rest trailed behind. My mom was visibly shaken by the incident but wanted to save face for me slash the crowd that was suddenly hounding us. She insists she's fine, doesn't want the police, doesn't want the fuss, and we go about our shop. When we got to the checkout about 20, 30 minutes later, a few of the people that had witnessed the whole thing had gathered and insisted they pay for my mom's shop, which she reluctantly accepted. Then they helped us take all the shopping out to the car. And when we get home, my mom tells me she doesn't want me getting into any fights ever again. Then she lets me have way too many donuts. P.S. To clarify, my mom absolutely cannot stand having her one arm restrained in any way. Grabbing her wrist and hand is a huge no-go. It freaks her out, and all logic goes out the window. Please don't think too poorly of her getting quick to anger and violence in this situation because she honestly is the most level-headed and sweetest person in any other circumstance. I can't believe that this Karen actually yanked off the OP's mom's prosthetic arm just because she wanted a disabled parking spot. Like, that's kind of hilarious and messed up. Just outrageous and completely disrespectful. I totally support the OP in this situation, and I hope that this Karen mom learned her lesson. As for whether or not the story is fake or real, I think it's definitely real. The details the OP included in the story, like the way their mom drives and the way Karen acted, make it seem like a genuine experience. Plus, who would make up something like that? It's just too outrageous to be fake. A Karen tried to sue me for everything my grandparents left me after disowning her for her mistreatment of me in childhood. She lost and continued to harass me for money, but I stayed strong. Here's what happened. So I was born when my mother and father were only 17. It forced my both of my parents to drop out of high school and each get a GED so they could find work right away. My father especially was not happy about this because he had dreams of playing football in college, and instead, he had to work at a gas station. He said to my face many times that I ruined his dream. My mother hardly raised me at all as she had to work too. They had a cranky old lady next door watch me most of the time. She wasn't so bad. She gave me more attention than my parents did. My father eventually managed to land a better job as a manager due to his experience running the gas station. It was right after that my mom got pregnant with my sister. I was six when she was born. I wasn't exactly shown much love before that. But once my sister came along, it was made pretty obvious to even my six-year-old self that I was unwanted. The only ones who seemed to care were my paternal grandparents and somewhat my babysitter. And they were more like my parents because they treated me the way a little kid needed to be loved. We lived in a two-bedroom apartment, and as my sister got older, it went from me sharing a bedroom with her to me kicked out of the room entirely. I slept on the couch for two years, and I barely had anything to my name other than clothes, school supplies, and an old Game Boy. When I was 10, my parents decided they were going to move away, but this move did not include me. I ended up actually being fine with this, as my grandparents had agreed to take me in. My life was instantly better. I got my own room again, and my grandparents gifted me a brand new N64 in 1996. That Christmas, I got a Game Boy Pocket too. 
and there were a couple of other kids my age in the neighborhood I got to hang out with. We rode bikes, played video games, shot cans with pellet guns, built forts, and got dirty playing in the creek. You know, stuff a normal kid would enjoy. I was finally happy. As time went on, I grew up and eventually moved out, but later moved back in to help my grandparents' house as they were getting old and living off their retirement savings. So some rent money for me went a long way in paying the bills. My grandpa was the kind of person who'd wanted to build a bomb shelter during the Cold War, but never got around to it. He wanted to volunteer for the military in the 60s, but was turned down due to a medical condition and the fact his eyesight was not great, so he focused on saving whatever he thought he needed. He told me many times it was better to have something and not need it, than need it and not have it. Our area suffered from numerous power outages in winter due to heavy winds and storms. So having gasoline and propane for heaters and generators was a must. All these saving habits became my own as time went on, because it was better to need this stuff rarely than not have it at all. Of course, there was the HOA bothering us, but that's its own other story. The problem is, about five years back, my grandma died suddenly, and my grandpa was heartbroken. He also went about a year and a half later. Pretty much everything they owned was willed to me. Their savings, their house, their vehicles, their stuff, everything. The house was long paid off, and Grandpa knew how to keep up with its maintenance. In fact, after Grandma died, he kind of doubled down on renovating the place. He had the roof redone, the house was repainted by us inside and out, and we fixed a lot of little things. Grandpa's neighbor George even came by to help redo the plumbing. Ironically, the HOA was rather happy with these changes, because the house didn't look run down anymore. One morning I was fixing breakfast and my grandpa never came downstairs. You couldn't keep the man from his bacon, so I went to check on him, and he wasn't moving. I called 911 and paramedics came, only to tell me he'd passed in his sleep. My parents made grandpa's funeral a shit show. They didn't bother to show up for grandma's. They were too busy, and at grandpa's funeral, they didn't seem to grieve at all. My sister also showed up wearing a brightly colored designer dress, which I wasn't happy about as it was a church clothes-only function. I noticed my parents repeatedly whispering to each other and glaring at me whenever I looked at them. Come to find out at the will reading that my parents knew that they'd been disinherited long ago for their treatment of me, and they thought it extremely unfair I got everything. They threatened to sue me to contest the will, and I got repeated calls and messages from my father, mother, and sister telling me I needed to do the right thing and give my father what was supposed to be his. I told them all to flake off in far more unsavory words. My parents ended up taking me to court to challenge the will, but the judge ruled in my favor after seeing the will and hearing us both out, so it wasn't a long, drawn-out legal battle. The judge even looked at my parents with absolute disgust after seeing the will and hearing about their mistreatment of me in my childhood. He called my father a terrible parent and that my grandparents were right to disown him. My father just hung his head in silence, but he made sure to stop me outside the courtroom and tell me I was always the biggest mistake of his life and that if he could go back in time, he'd make sure I never existed. He should have been a football star. And instead, he has to wear a name tag for a 9 to 5. I told him that mistake or not, Grandma and Grandpa could see what kind of nasty person he was. I didn't ask to be born, and the only real love I ever got was from my grandparents. And he was no father of mine anymore. I got a few more threatening and harassing phone calls, as well as some letters from my parents. All demanding money among other things. But over time, they just stopped because I completely stonewalled them. Never responded to the emails or letters, and I stayed silent during the phone calls. A few times I just left the phone sitting on the counter with them ranting till they realized I wasn't listening. Aside from not getting the house or money, my parents seemed particularly irked they could not even get a rise out of me. But I was prepared to go to war against them, and they knew it. So in the end they just left me alone. From what I know looking at Facebook the past decade, my sister tried to get into modeling, got married, had two kids, got divorced, and is currently unhappily working a job she feels is beneath her. My mother currently works retail and is also vocal about her disdain of it. Like my father, she peaked in high school. She was a cheerleader back then and even had her old uniform framed on the wall. My father has pretty much had the same job for 25 years. He must be good at it if he's still doing it. As for me, well, I'm in my late 30s now, and I live pretty much debt-free in a nice neighborhood. I haven't really had a girlfriend since high school, and I've had little motivation to ever have another relationship. But loneliness gets to everyone, so maybe I'll try to find someone soon. Not many are in the financial position I'm in at my age. Single, paid-off house, two vehicles, and a decent amount in the bank. I guess I could aim to be a stepfather. That might be more my speed. Oh my gosh, guys, can you believe the absolute insanity of this Karen? Trying to sue OP for everything their loving grandparents left them after treating OP like trash their entire childhood? Talk about audacity. 
I mean seriously, the way OP's parents just kicked them out of their room to sleep on the couch for two years, that's just heartbreaking, and let's not even get started on their parents making grandpa's funeral all about them, but I've got to hand it to OP for standing strong and not giving in to their parents' ridiculous demands. That judge was spot on calling OP's father a terrible parent. And can we just appreciate how OP completely stonewalled their parents' attempts to harass them? I mean, that's some serious strength right there. What do you guys think of this wild situation? Let me know in the comments below.